Today we are making quilt as you go pillowcases, so let's get started. First, you are going to want to get some fabric strips in both dark and light values. And I am using leftover scraps from an older collection in some blue tones. And then you're going to get a scrap piece of material that is about 22, 23 inches squared roughly. And you can also go very cheap on this and use like broadcloth, muslin, or heck, even a print that you do not like. Because either way, this will be covered up. Now then, with the wrong side up, you can use some basting spray to lightly glue the same size scrap piece of batting on the top. Now please note, this spray could gum up your sewing needle, so if you do not like using basting sprays, you can just pin it together to hold it all into place. Now for the fun part. Go ahead and get your scraps or strips of fabric and cut out a small piece for the center. It can be a square, rectangle, whatever. This is the beauty of this method because nothing needs to be perfect. And I am going to be starting out with a dark fabric first for the center and then I'll take a lighter print scrap and rough cut it to the size you will need for the opposite sides. And then you're going to place right sides together and sew a quarter inch seam allowance. Now please note that your seam allowances do not need to be perfect. This is a great project to practice just your standard sewing skills and once you've sewn the sides on, you can then press it open. Now you'll have this longish rectangle piece and I'm going to take a darker fabric selection and place it on one side so I can rough cut a piece out that is long enough and then I'll do the same to the opposite side. Now since this side does have raw edges on it, no need to worry about that. You can just place the fabric lower so then when you sew your seam allowance it will cover it up. So all you'll need to do is then sew a quarter inch seam allowance and once again press it open. We just used darker prints so now we are going to use the lighter prints and just keep repeating these same steps. Lay your fabric near it, rough cut it to the size you need for the opposite sides and then once again if you have some raw edges showing don't worry just move your strip higher or lower until it is covered up and then once again sew a quarter inch seam allowance and press open. Now you're going to just keep repeating each step until you've covered up your entire square piece of fabric that you started with. And if you are familiar with the traditional quilt block called a courthouse steps, then this is exactly what we are making. But if you could please take a moment to like and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to be notified for your next project.
Eventually you will hit a point in time where you may want to flip your quilt around and trim off everything outside of your backing fabric. And then that way when you flip your quilt over to the front again, you'll be using less fabric to do the corners of your quilt. After that you'll want to then create a straight edge on one side so then we can start squaring it up. Once one side is straight then you're just going to line that to the edge of your mat on zero and then trim off the opposite side at 20 inch mark on your cutting mat. Then rotate it about 90 degrees and trim again at the 20 inch mark. Rotate 90 degrees and trim. You're just going to keep doing this to all four sizes until you have a squared top. Or if you have a square ruler, you can just place the ruler on the center of your quilt and trim all around it. After your top is squared, we will then need to create an envelope backing. So go ahead and cut yardage fabric into a piece that is 20 by 16 and another piece that is 20 by 14. And with both pieces on one side that is the 20 inch long, you are going to take your ruler and draw a line across it one inch wide. Now you can use chalk, fabric pen, pencil, whatever. I am using a pen since I have navy fabric so it will not show either way. Then you are going to take the edge and fold it to the line that you drew and iron it down. This will create a half inch fold and then you're going to fold it again to hide the raw edges and this will be another half inch fold. Now you're going to do this to both pieces that you just cut and you're going to create a top stitch to hold everything together. You can do one stitch or two, whichever you prefer, or you can even use a decorative stitch on your sewing machine. Once the envelope backings are prepared, you are going to want to lay your quilted top wrong side up and then place the 20 by 13 inch piece of fabric now with the right side up towards the bottom. Then place the 20 by 15 piece right side up but towards the top. 
Now your layers will overlap each other, which this will then give you that envelope backing. Now you are going to then sew a quarter inch seam allowance all around the edge just to hold it together all in place. But if you don't like to just transfer it to your sewing machine, you can then pin it together just to avoid shifting while you're sewing your edges down. And we are almost finished. Now we just need to create binding exactly like how you bind a quilt. And then we're gonna bind the edges to cover up that raw edge and you're done. This will provide a nice little accent around the edge of your pillow. And then all you'll have to do is get a 20 inch pillow form and stuff it. Envelope pillows are great for using up your scraps or creating a cover for your pillow that is machine washable. So I love this so much and with this quilt as you go technique it comes together pretty quickly in which i do hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and i'll see you next time